If I were to come into your home and say things that are completely against what you believe and what the Bible says to your children over and over again, what would you do? Hopefully kick me out and say, stay away from my kid. And yet, many are not being involved in the educational process, and they're just sending their kids off like lambs to the slaughter to be indoctrinated with whatever program some administrator or some person that has values totally different to you has decided they're going to teach those ideas to your children over and over again. Welcome back to the podcast, episode 109 of Audacious Faith. I'm going to throw something out there today that's going to get some people probably a little bit mad, but that's okay. And that is this. Why should you pull your kids out of the public school system? Now, it's kind of crazy because I actually coach in a public school. I grew up going to public schools. Um, and quite honestly, I will tell you right off the bat as a disclaimer, there are many great and wonderful, well-meaning people who are still working, serving, and teaching in the public school. So I'm not speaking against them. I'm not speaking against your motive. I'm not speaking even against the system because I went through the system. But I will tell you, and I think most of us would agree, that the public school system of today is not what it used to be. And it's not necessarily the fault of the people that are employed to teach there and to deal with the, uh, the children there. And in fact, if you're doing that, I would encourage you to keep doing that and be an influence and be a positive influence in the lives of people and young people that are there because they need you. They need that light and they need that love and they need that guidance and they need those positive role models. So if you're doing that just like I'm doing that, I want to say Thank you, and keep up the great work. But as parents, as parents, why should you be concerned today, starting all the way down at the preschool level and going all the way up into what we're seeing happen at many colleges and universities today, where things have literally shifted off of education and seem to have gone to more of indoctrination and values and ideas that are kind of making our head spins. And we're saying, what in the world has happened and how did we get here? All right. So there's two areas that I want to bring out today briefly, which are going to explain why to me a lot of what's happening in the public school system from the very low part all the way up today is geared towards something that parents of your children do not want to support and do not want to be. Because after all, your kids are very, very important, right? So area number one out of the two is the family. There is a huge attack on the family today and the breakdown of the family. Let me tell you what the Bible says about the family and how it's supposed to work. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, says, Children... Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. You will have a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So let's kind of look at that really quickly. Children, obey your parents. More and more in the public school system, it is designed today, efforts from administrators and people that are put in the curriculum, that parents are being excluded out of the process. We see this in, in America where parents are going to school board meetings and they're being escorted out. They're not being listened to. Um, they're telling children now that you can do and make decisions and your parent not only doesn't have to give you consent, but we can totally keep it hidden from them and make it so they can't even know. They don't even have a right to know. As a child, you get to do what you want. Your, your parent cannot come along and tell you that you can't do it and infringe upon your rights. This is totally contrary to what the Bible teaches us and even what traditional values that have made this country great in the past has taught us about parents and children. Now, do some parents not do a good job 
of raising their children the way that they should? Of course. There's many parents out there who have struggled and maybe have not done a good job. You might be listening to this and go, my parents just didn't care. They were off in their own world doing all of this. But there's a difference between that and a system which is designed to strip the influence and, and uh, the supervisory part of parents and the respect for parents away. And we're seeing that more and more accelerated, apparent, especially in these last few years. All right? It says, children, it's your responsibility actually to listen to your parents. And it doesn't mean because they're always right, but because you're doing that as it being the right thing to do. All right, because you belong to the Lord. That's what it says. We're to honor our father and our mother, and this is the first commandment with a promise. Okay, and then what is the other thing that parents, especially, are supposed to do? And it's it's interesting that it ties into fathers. We have a lot of fatherless homes today, or we have a lot of homes where the father is not taking the role that they're supposed to do, and we're seeing that effect with rising crime, angry children. Uh, so much that's happening today. A father is supposed to step up and not only not provoke their children to anger by the way they're treating them, but it says it's a father's responsibility along with the mother to bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Godly principles. And more and more in the public school education today, we're seeing a curriculum which is designed to purposely attack those Godly principles, which have been so present um, in the founding and the raising and the heritage of this country and the freedoms that it has stood for up to this point. And I see, think that is why we're seeing chaos on college campuses. We're seeing chaos in the streets. That's why we're seeing, besides the fact that repercussions are being thrown away, we're seeing mass um, smash and grabs and burglaries and violence and people being pushed in front of subway cars and people just being beat up, raped, murdered for no reason. There's an acceleration of all this that's going on. And it's not all to be blamed on the public school system, but let's face it, where our values and everything come from are often from where we're going to be spending the most time in our lives. And children growing up are spending the majority of their time more than anywhere else at a place called school. Now, does that mean that a private school is better? Not necessarily. You have to be careful where you're putting them. Does it mean that a private school is always affordable? Well, a lot of them are not. But there are many places where they are, and there are ways to do it, and they'll work with you. So that's the first consideration. And then the second thing that I wanted to bring up is that don't get fall into the trap of allowing schools, public, private, or whatever, parents, don't fall in the trap of letting the school system raise your kids for you. It is your responsibility. It is our responsibility. Hey, when I used to go and get called in for a uh, parent conference, because of something that my children may have done. And it happened a few times. Um, I knew a few principals that they knew me by my first name and, and all of that. And I'll admit that. It didn't mean my kids were perfect. They were far from perfect. Um, but you know what? They've turned out all right, thank God, um, as, as we get into adulthood. And so I'm very, very thankful for that. But here's a parental responsibility. It says in First Timothy chapter 5, uh, beginning at verse 8, actually that's the whole verse, but those who won't care for their relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. You see, parents out there, grandparents who are raising children, their grandchildren that they never expected to have to raise, aunts, uncles, whoever it is, if you have these young people entrusted to your care in your household, we have a responsibility, all right? And that responsibility is to take some ownership and to make sure that we're involved in the process of what they are being taught, all right? We're supposed to care for them and make sure that 
we're not having them deny the true faith. And unfortunately, more and more now, in the public school system, it is secular humanistic, where it denies God, denies that God created heaven and earth and all that are on heaven and earth. It's atheistic. It's anti-family values of everything that the Bible stands for. This is what is being taught. And do you really feel that God would have you to have the children that are under your care and your responsibility to be receiving instruction constantly that is going totally against what God has said is right and wrong? You know, by the time they hit adulthood, and all of these ideas are formulated in there, it's often too late at that particular point. If I were to come into your home and say things that are completely against what you believe and what the Bible says to your children over and over again, what would you do? Hopefully kick me out and say, stay away from my kid. And yet many are not being involved in the educational process and they're just sending their kids off like lambs to the slaughter every single day to be indoctrinated with whatever program some administrator or some person that has values totally different to you has decided that instead of teaching math and English and reading and writing, they're going to teach those ideas to your children over and over again. It's your responsibility, your responsibility to make sure that that is not what's happening. And unfortunately, in many cases, in many parts of the country, especially where I'm at here in Southern California, that means that if you want to steer your children in the right direction and keep them away from these ideas, you need to pull them out of the particular school thing that they are in right now, because otherwise it will just continue and it's going to get worse. Well, that's my take. You may or may not like it, but that's all right. If you're still watching this video, at least you watched it this long, right? And you got the information. You do with it what you want. I would pray that God would lead you in a direction which would be better for your children. Maybe you're in a public school where this is not happening, and they have great teachers. Those do exist today, and there are good schools out there. If so, be thankful for them, support them, encourage them, and uh, encourage more to do the same. But if that's not the case... You don't have to stand for it. Don't just sit back and say things are the way they are. Take some action and put them in a better situation. That's what God would have you to do today, and he would provide. I would welcome your comments. You can email me. Whether you agree or disagree, that's fine. You have a right to do that at jgodfearsenior at gmail.com. Also, Facebook and Instagram at jgodfearsenior. I look forward to your comments so that we can engage together. And may God continue to bless you. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and share it with others. We will see you next time. This has been the Audacious Faith Podcast. God bless you.